Welcome back to the channel. If you missed part one of this deck renovation, be sure to check that one to see more of the before shots and all the work already put in to get it to this point. But for this video, we're just going to jump right back into it by first adding the blocking for the picture frame border. There's a few ways you can do this, but I'm just adding a new joist for the main deck boards to land on, and then these little blocks spaced out 12 inches on center for the outside picture frame. Since I already finished the outside skirting of the deck while I was waiting on materials, and I didn't want to nail from the outside, I'm toe screwing from the inside. These borders are a focal point of decks and you want everything as flush as possible. And what I'm doing here is resting the bar of a clamp on the two joists and then bumping the blocks up to the bar and clamping tight to hold it in place. It just works really great at keeping all three pieces in the same plane, so ultimately the deck boards are nice and even. When you're working alone, the use of clamps or screwing some blocks on like I am here to hold the new joist up in place for me is such a big help. Rather than staggering boards and having butt joints all across the deck, since they don't make boards long enough to span the whole distance, I decided to add a spline down the middle. Function wise that allows me to use the long enough boards on each side of it, but I think it adds a design element too and looks pretty good. I was able to use one of the existing joists and lay this spline out to where it would be dead center of the door when you walk out. And framing wise it's just the same as before on that first side. The way the angles are on the other two sides, I didn't need to add those little blocks. Just one for the inside edge of the picture frame, and then another block to catch all the field deck boards that die into it. Throughout you'll see me use a mix of screws to pull everything tight and where I can't get the nail gun, but then I'll finish it off with some ring shank nails when I can. They're just easier, cheaper, and of course faster. The next thing I did was add some mid-span blocking. These joists were bowing and twisting every which way after prying off the old deck boards. So I clamped and got everything pulled back in line where it's supposed to be with the blocking. And it's crazy how much more solid this makes everything tying it all together. The stairs was more of the same, adding blocking so I could do the picture frame miters on every step. And you'll see I also had to add some more joists and stringers in the middle. They had these kind of just evenly spaced at like 22 inches and you definitely don't want to have any more than 16 inch on center spacing for PVC or composite decks. I think solid wood decking being more structurally sound in comparison is about the only upside it has in my opinion. Framing a deck from scratch with this decking, I think about 14 inches on center joy spacing is a sweet spot, but anywhere from 12 to 16 works great. But after getting all this blocking done, this thing felt solid as a rock. The next thing I did was check over the main deck for any high spots with a long level so I could get those planed down. One problem area in particular was where the two sections came together on the beam. I don't know if it was bad from the start when it was built or if the boards just dried out and shrunk at different rates, but it was super noticeable to me and drove me crazy how wonky the old deck boards were along here. So I got those planed down, flushed together, and then feathered out the joists from there. So when I add the new decking, everything will sit nice and even. With that done, I could add the protective joist tape on the top of everything, and I'm using the backerless G-tape here. It's the easiest work with that i found, and this stuff sticks tenaciously. And the purpose of this is to protect and prolong the life of the framing. Most rot and damage to joists like this happens on the top edge. Here where I live, we have ice and snow, wet leaves and debris that just gets stuck between the deck boards and sits on top of the joist causing damage. In a lot of cases, resurfacing a deck with a PVC product like I'm using may not make a lot of sense since it'll outlast the framing. But I'm not made of money here, and this material really was still in good shape. But this will help a great deal, especially in a redeck situation where there's already a ton of holes in it. This will seal those up so no moisture can just sit on top or get into those old nail holes. 
I wasn't quite ready for decking yet, but my dad was available to help, so I took advantage of that to get the border pieces on. These long pieces are already like carrying a wet noodle, and when considering I had to cut big notches out to go around the post, a helping hand was definitely the smart move. I ordered 20 foot long boards to do these in one piece, and no extra. So one thing I did to make things easy was cut some plywood templates. We could use these to get the angles dialed in and set them in place to take our measurements off of. It just worked out great to eliminate any miscuts on our actual boards. This is TimberTech Azek decking, and there are a few reasons why I like the PVC decking over composite, and one is that you can actually glue miters and they'll stay together. I'm using Christie's Red Hot Adhesive here, and it works amazing. It essentially melts the two pieces together. And at least to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any glue to use on composite decking that will hold up to our drastic weather changes here where I live. And I'm just a sucker for those nice tight joints that are going to stay that way. But once we got the corners locked in place, we ran a string line from end to end on the front of the deck to make sure this piece was running, well, as straight as a string, since the rest of the decking will be referenced off this edge. To attach it, I'm using Fasten Master Cortex screws, and if you've never seen these, don't worry about those screw holes. There's matching plugs, and we're going to make those all disappear. They come with these special bits that set the screw at the perfect depth, and you can get the plugs just all separated, but I definitely prefer getting them collated like this, just get the grain of the plug set going the right direction to match the decking, and with a wave of the magic mallet, the screw holes are gone. I'm literally holding the camera two inches away here and trying to focus on them, and they're still hard to find. I'm just a big fan and love using this system. I use it for all sorts of the white PVC trim and stuff like that too. With the border done, I still needed to run all the wiring for the low voltage LED lights. I got a new in use outdoor electrical box and attached all the lighting components here tucked away in the corner. It looks like a lot, but I'll just put a plant here when I redo the landscaping next spring. But I wanted to have all my bases covered and a lot of versatility with these lights. There's the transformer, which is all you need, but I also added a photocell timer so I could have them set to just automatically come on at dusk and shut off after a few hours. Then the other box is a dimmer, which also came with a wireless remote. And I'm glad I got this because these lights sure are bright, which is great for when we want bright light, but typically I just have them set lower for more of a mood lighting. Next was drilling holes and running the wire from post to post. The LED lights themselves come with a wire lead long enough to get below the decking and with a plug on one end for the light. So I just got that stapled up out of the way for now and could get the other end tied into the other wires with some outdoor silicone filled wire nuts. Then off camera I just buzzed around real quick to get all the wiring nice and tidy and stapled in place. After plugging a few lights in and verifying they worked, it was time to start throwing down some more decking. And you'll notice I'm still using the Fasten Master Cortex screws and plugs for the entire deck. Of course another option would be to get the grooved deck boards and use the hidden edge clips. This is my opinion, but you just can't beat how solid a face screwed deck feels compared to those edge clips. Not only is that my opinion, but it is also in TimberTech's installation guide. Surely they sell the edge clips if you want them, but for the best connection and to eliminate expansion and contraction, they state face screwing with either their top lock screws, which are just color matched screws, or the Cortex system with plugs is better. And I mean you guys have already seen how good these screw holes all but disappear with the plugs so it's still a hidden system, but especially in a resurfaced situation, I wanted that solid connection with screws right through the face. The ends of the boards aren't square from the factory, so the edge that butts up to my other border does need cut first. But on the other end where the center spline will be, I'm just leaving them long and then I'll come back through and cut them all in a straight line together. This part is a pretty quick and satisfying process, but a closer look at some of the gadgets I'm using here. These are just some regular Bessie trigger clamps and my idea was to just bolt a piece of quarter inch steel or aluminum on the ends to fit between the deck boards, but I looked in my miscellaneous drawer and found these brackets. No idea what they're from, just one of those things you save just in case you need it for something, and today was that day. 
They work great for pulling the boards nice and tight and keeping them all running straight. Now these boards are nowhere near like trying to pull treated lumber straight, but they can have a little wave to them if you didn't have them stored flat. Nothing bad enough that you can't move by hand. The clamps just make it effortless, so all I have to do is focus on screwing straight. But a main reason is these screws have the reverse threads on top to create the clean hole and really pull them tight. But what that does is it makes the deck board want to lift up as you're screwing. The clamps just eliminate that, and like I said, just make it effortless to keep everything where you want it. The spacers you see are from Deckmate, and they're two-sided for either an eighth inch or three sixteenth inch spacing like I'm using. But the real star of this entire project is the new Milwaukee Gen 4 M18 Fuel Impact and Hammer Drill that Home Depot sent out for me to share with you guys this quarter, part of their prospective program, along with the new Gen 3 M12 set as well. Driving literally thousands of screws on this deck sure was a great way to try them out and break them in. I don't know how much further Milwaukee can take it, but they keep making these drills and impacts even more lightweight and compact while adding even more power. It's crazy, but definitely appreciated when you legitimately have these tools in your hands all day. Besides the ergonomics, a feature of the new impacts I'm most excited about is the improved trigger control as well as the new tri-LED lights that are moved up right next to the bit. Something I'm really happy to see on the M18 drill is the new auto stop feature. This prevents the drill from over rotating in instances where your larger bits bind up. This of course prevents tweaking your wrist, but I've had times where the bit binds up and the butt of the drill twists and slams into something causing damage where I couldn't have damage. So this is a safety feature I'm really happy to see. The Home Depot links to both of these kits will be down in the video description if you'd like to check them out more. I've been super impressed with them so far. Thanks to the rain, I didn't film every single deck board going in, but you get the idea. Had terrible weather to finish off this deck. Super hot, sunny, and humid, and then it randomly rained for 10 minutes, which actually felt good for me to keep working in, but not so much for the camera. To finish this side off, I had to break out the compass scribe along the chimney. Who says deck building can't have some aspects of finer carpentry? The other side of the deck is more of the same, except with the angle cut on the one end. Rather than moving my saw back and forth, I just got my angle cut first and then measured out to rough length and cut it with a circular saw. Since just like the other side, this end doesn't have to be perfect. I got a bunch of samples back before I ordered materials and another big reason for choosing this slate gray PVC decking is how much cooler it stays out in the sun compared to the composite samples I got. It was a drastic difference. I used an infrared temp gun and this PVC was actually cooler than the paint on the old wood deck too. There were some other colors I liked a little better but when considering how cool it stayed so my kids could actually come out here and play in the middle of the day and not just get burnt and it had really good traction when wet compared to the others too. I finished this side up even with the other, just past where the spline board ends. The rest will be hidden under that step that I still have to build, so I wanted to save that for the end, just in case I ran low on material and needed to fill in under there with scraps. But now it was time for the money cut. And I call it the money cut because it'll cost a whole lot of money if I mess up. Just kidding, it's not that big a deal. Just one of those instances you want to bump it up to a measure three times cut once type of thing. A couple things I did to make sure I wasn't cutting down through my protective joist tape was I didn't screw these boards down tight right here at the end yet. And I set the depth of the saw just barely to where it wouldn't cut all the way through. Then I can just break the rest off by hand. After cutting the first side, I measured over five and a half inches and went for round two.
Then the spline board slid right in place like a glove and I could get it all screwed down. The main deck was off and on rain, but when it came time for the stairs, it was more of a steady monsoon. But stuff still needs to get done, so I was only able to save a little bit to film. Something I could do while it was raining was go ahead and build the step inside the shop and get it primed and painted. One thing that did differ on the steps is that the majority of my miters weren't cut away to go around the post so I could drill some pocket holes on the bottom for some extra insurance keeping them tight. In typical Midwest fall fashion, this deck has already seen 90 degree sunny days right into below freezing nights just a couple days later, and these miters are still nice and tight using this method with the Christie's glue. If it works here, I'm fairly confident it'll work anywhere. With the stairs done, I moved back up to finish off underneath the step. I did have plenty of material, but I came across a few boards with damage on the edges from shipping, so it definitely paid off to wait and hide those here. Then all I had to do was carry the step in and screw it in place, then finish off the last bit of decking on top. Moving right into the railings, here I'm cutting a few inches off the wood post. I'm leaving them tall enough for where I need to screw the railing brackets in, but I wanted room above that to get my hand in for wiring the lights. And while I had the sawzall out, I just used that to make a little notch right where the light plug would end up. These post wraps came at 39 inches, but I personally didn't want that much sticking up past my 36 inch railings, so I got them all trimmed down to length. I did a couple sections off camera to get my process down and found it way easier to get everything laid out with the post laying down first. I drilled the hole for the lights wiring to pass through as well as pre-drilled for all the railing brackets. Then I could just slide the wrap and post base on and get the light plugged in. Here's a closer look at the LED lights I went with. They're super tiny so you hardly even notice them, but like I already mentioned, they put out a ton of light, which I'm gonna make you stick around and wait till the end to see. I'm really happy with these and I love the effect of the down light showcasing down on the deck. Doing work for other people is way easier, usually. I just do what they want, but the hardest part of doing my own projects like this deck was just making decisions. There are so many options when it comes to decking, railing, lighting, everything, but I'm really happy with what we chose. With the post wraps on, it was easy peasy adding the railing brackets since I already had those pre-drilled. When it came to cutting the railing to length, notice I'm measuring from the center, so I'd end up with equal spacing between balusters on each end. In some cases, I either had to make the center the center of a baluster, or the center of a space. Just all depended on how the measurements fell. You'll see there's also an aluminum extrusion that runs through the pieces that I just cut at the same time. I've seen some vinyl railings that are pretty chintzy and not very strong, but I was really quite impressed with these. I was worried about it, especially on the longer sections, but these really did exceed my expectations and feel really solid. The brackets had little ledges that the rails sit on, and it's just a matter of putting it all together. And right about here I realized I needed to slide the bracket covers on first, but I caught it before screwing it in at least. 
The railings are definitely another thing it was great to have a second set of hands for. One section that was attached differently was where it angled. This company does make 45 degree brackets that die into the corner of the post, but this isn't 45 degrees, so they also have one that rotates to a wide range of angles. This one just screws directly on and then there's covers that snap on. Worked out great. Last thing to do here was pre-drill and get the lights attached on my line that I already had made. Oh, and all the post caps, I did go around off camera and get those stuck on with some Lexel so they're sealed up and the wind doesn't just blow them off. I still needed to plug the screw holes on the stairs, so voila, that's done. And one last thing to do was trimming around the tops of the flower boxes. I used the scrap decking off cuts I had left and ripped them down to two and a quarter inch wide, I believe leaving the smooth factory edge on the outside. On the ripped edge, I got some color matched paint, just like I painted the boxes themselves, to make the inside edge look better. After two coats of paint, you can't even tell it's cut. And with that, this project is officially done, for now anyways. And bear with me for a little longer outro than usual here, there's just lots to see and such a drastic improvement from before. And best of all, no more maintenance required on the decking and railing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the transformation. If you're not already, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up, it really does help the channel. And be sure to check out all the links down in the video description and drop me a comment below letting me know what you think. Alright, after that I have no more demands from you. Until next time, take care.